We're here this morning to talk a little bit about uh, CPD that we're running at ICOM for Master Tongue Acupuncture. And like I said, we're here with uh, Sean Goodman and Dr. Gil Tong, two highly experienced acupuncture clinicians and international teachers of Master Tongue Acupuncture. Collectively, with I think over 40 years of experience, trained initially in classical channel-based acupuncture. Um, can I ask you guys to introduce yourself and tell us how, but maybe more importantly, why, having trained in classical acupuncture, you've devoted your practice to the study and application of um, master tongue acupuncture? First of all, you know, when you do classical style acupuncture, one of the questions you're asking all the time is which meridian? So you're looking at the acupuncture in a meridian perspective. You're not asking what are the zangs that are involved in the disease. You first ask, what channels are involved? So part of my study, I was studying with, uh, I, was, I started to study Richard Tan's balance uh, method. And uh, the person, Ilan Migdali, that was teaching me, he, uh, first of all, master, uh, Richard Tan used a lot of uh, uh, Master Dong's acupuncture points. Mm -hmm. So that's the first time I, I, I hear the name Master Dong. So then uh, you start using the points in the balance method and then, after like a few times studying with him, I said, uh, tell me more about the uh, Master Dong. Who's this Master Dong that all these points we are using? So he's, he, that's the first time I, I heard about Master Dong. Okay. And then uh, he told me there's a book, uh, a book by, by uh, Yang, Wei, Wei Chi Yang, about uh, Master Dong's acupuncture. And I bought the book and I started looking into it. And um, the way he tries to explain Master Dong's acupuncture is through the channel system, through the 14 channels. Okay. So I was already practicing the channels through the acupuncture in that kind of way. So it really was very easy for me to start using Master Dong's points in my own uh, 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 way of seeing the system. And integrating it in your existing practice. Yeah, as like a 14 channel approach, because... So Yang, his approach to Master Dong acupuncture was that uh, uh, it's based on the 14 channel and the points are extra points of uh, the 14 channels. So to understand the points, you must understand meridian theory and not only meridian theory, all what Chinese medicine offers. Yeah. So like it, wor it worked together. It was very good to work like that. And I even taught it in that, kind, in that way. So after like, uh, that was in 2007, in 2013, uh, there was a, a book came out, also one of uh, Master Dong's students by Chang Ming Wan. And he, he claimed that Master Dong's acupuncture is not based on the 14 channels. It has its all totally different approach. And um, so that was the first time that I started to see that maybe there's something different here about Master Dong acupuncture. It's a, it's a totally different way of looking at channels, and that's what makes it very interesting. It's showing us that maybe the, the roots of this acupuncture are more, are very, they, pre, they, they came before the 14 channels because of the way the channels are built in Master Dong acupuncture, because they're more like the beginning of acupuncture, where, where you're treating areas. The channels are areas and not like a line that has internal uh, pathways that go into the organs. In Master Dong, the channels don't go into the organs. There's no mm -hmm. internal pathways. So it's a different way of looking at things, a different uh, perspective. And, you know, after practicing in one way, it's hard to like uh, say, okay, maybe I'm doing something that is, uh, you could use it in that way, but maybe there's a different way that is more what Master Dong meant. So, and also mm -hmm. teaching it, it's like saying, okay, I need to look at things from a totally different perspective. Yeah. What's very interesting is how slowly we, we got to know uh, the, the other approach to acupuncture. It started in 2013 when Chang Ming Wan uh, uh, published the book. But when we got to Taiwan, it was really, we really realized that that's really the, the right path to go on. Yeah, so actually my history with Master Dong's acupuncture starts with Sean because Sean was my first acupuncture teacher back back in back home in Israel. And while I was uh, continuing my, my studies in Asia, uh, spending a year in Beijing and afterwards six years in Taiwan doing my postgraduate degrees, uh, I got to know uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Su Yu, her name. Uh, she was a second generation apprentice of Dr. Li Guo Zhen. The, the doctor with whom we studied uh, in Taiwan 
Dr. Li Guozhen uh, studied together with uh, Dr. Hu Wenzhi. So a lot of Chinese names of, of, of uh, Taiwanese doctors, but they, uh, Dr. Hu studied uh, uh, the longest, the longest time. He spent the longest time with Master Dong back in the 60s. And what we got to know and understood, as Sean said, uh, from Dr. Wang's book, who published in 2013, that there is another uh, way and there is a different approach. Uh, I I like to call it the Taiwanese approach. Actually, it's all coming from Taiwan because Doc, Master Dong came from Taiwan, but Dr. Yang Weijie uh, immigrated to the West and is based in the, in the US and he tells Master Dong's approach from the 14 channels perspective. Mm -hmm. And while I was studying in Taiwan, we started to understand that there is a totally different approach to Master Dong's acupuncture. And there are more points to learn, different diagnostic methods to understand how to apply the points. And uh, basically a, a, a totally different story. Mm -hmm. And for us, it was uh, an, uh, an incredible discovery because it kind of like fill up the gaps uh, that we had throughout the years of how to apply this um, style of acupuncture. The, sto the story in short was that uh, I uh, presented a case uh, study. Uh, it was a very nice case study. I remember it until today about a female patient with uh, interstitial cystitis. And um, I applied uh, the lower three emperors. It's a combination of a uh, very famous combination treating the kidneys, uh, and I mentioned the points uh, in perspective to the 14 channels. And then Dr. Sue was kind of like interrupting me during my talk, my presentation saying, no, 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 I, I said I, I need a spleen six uh, because this uh, uh, set of points are uh, located on the uh, leg tie-in spleen channel. Yeah. And then she said, no, no, you, maybe you think you need a spleen six, but actually there is no... Uh, mm -hmm. equivalent between the 14 channels points and master dong's points. They are located in a different location and they are actually, they are on different channels. Mm -hmm. but then we started to understand and uh, learn more about this idea uh, that coming from Taiwan, that master dong's acupuncture has a different set of channels. Mm -hmm. So do you think that the, association or the mapping of the original master tongue that came to the west onto the 14 channels was just to make it more understandable for people who were already practicing acupuncture why make this association if it doesn't exist in the original master tongue why try to map it onto the 14 channel system if that's not the the history of it uh, we are not trying to say that what was being taught uh in in the west by other doctors uh, is wrong we are just offering a different way because no, none of us study uh, with Mastodon. Mm -hmm. And we need to understand that when they the 73 students studied with Mastodon, they were not being taught in a way that we are used to uh, uh, learn these days. They follow him, they observe him. He didn't talk much with his patients nor with his students. So the disciples themselves had to figure out how to interpret what they learn in the mm -hmm. clinic. And this is why we think Dr. Hu is a very, very interesting uh, figure and very Im important um, disciple because he spent enormous amount of time with, with Master Dong. And he, his clinical experience as well is very rich with years of uh, clinical practice. So we are not saying the, the other approach is, is wrong. If you studied before Master Dong's acupuncture from uh, uh, that perspective, that's okay. We just try to fill up the big story behind it. And this is through years of research that Sean started back uh, when I studied with him in Israel as a student. And together we continue it myself alone and Sean alone and together as well. While in the years I was in Taiwan and later on. Sean, you want to say something about the two approaches? Yeah, first of all, it's, gr it's great to have a student and afterwards becoming a colleague and then teaching together. Like for me, it's like uh, it's the best that could ever happen. 
it's like it doesn't always happen this kind of uh, situation so oh, we it's are... a very fun dynamic to learn with the two of you is yeah. the you know knowing that you were the you know you were the the, the introducer and the teacher of gil and now yeah now you yeah you're... that was in the past <laughs> <laughs> you must understand that master don when he taught his uh, approach he decided to teach because he didn't want the uh, he really uh, Chiang Kai Shak. Uh, he, he he made a call that he wanted to save the Chinese culture. So Master Dong, so this uh, lineage would not be lost. So he decided to teach his lineage. So the way they teach a lot of time in China, they they don't they you need to figure things out by yourself. Mm -hmm. So the people were in his clinic watching him needle. They were allowed to ask the patients questions. But Master Dong didn't say, okay, now I'm going to teach you the principles about, about my uh, system. Mm -hmm. You need to understand the system, the system through the points. So people understand the system in different ways. So Yang, he, he made this uh, revolution that he thinks that Master Dong's acupuncture is based on the 14 channels. But if you read Master Dong's preference for his book, he published five, five books. And the most important one is in the 1973 book, where he writes there clearly that his, his acupuncture system is different. It has its own uh, tradition, and it's not based on the 14 channels. What's interesting about Master Dong acupuncture is not to look at it as, at a, as a 14 channel perspective. Even though you could do that, it's not, I practiced that for years and it, I got very good results, but Maybe it's not really what the system is about. And if you're practicing something and you're not really using the, 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 the principles of the system, you'll get less, less results. And I, I think after shifting to the five zang approach, uh, I, I think my results are much better. And also, Master Dong's acupuncture is something that you develop into it. At the beginning, you think there's only points, but then at the end, you there's only principles, and the points are not important anymore. At the beginning, you need to learn like a student needs something very fixed, and say the points are here, and this is that, and then. But afterwards, through studying the points, you need to understand the principles behind the system, and just you need to figure out yourself. In a Chinese so, Sean, way, you know, in my understanding of it, would you say like the, the principles would be something like you know the one one zone you use to drain excess, and maybe the eight eight you you use more to to tonify underlying zhang deficiency? Are these the kind of principles that you that you're talking about in yeah. terms of how you apply? That, that there's a lot of principles, <laughs> but that's like yeah, that's also a very uh, important principle. Be the difference between the areas mm -hmm. uh, of the points. And that's true, yeah. Like we have points that are more yang and that will drain more, and points that are more yin that will tonify. Yeah, it's it's obvious. That's only it's part of it. But then the the it's, the basis is to know what channels. What are the channels? Okay, because points are in channels. You know, channels were were in Chinese medicine came before the points. We know it now. So you first have the channels, and then on the channels you have points. So the, 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 the main question is that everybody agrees with the areas and agrees with the, 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 the technique and the, the, what the actions of those areas. Yeah, the debate is more about the channels. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm curious because what you what, something that you said a little bit earlier on is that there, there's no map of, of kind of internal pathways or connections. And yet this style of acupuncture is very useful for chronic internal organ based conditions. So is it just that they didn't bother to map this, th th these channels internally because it's not necessary because it, it, it just works? or they don't exist so I'm, I'm curious as to if there aren't internal connections how do you affect the interior by just needling mm -hmm. this apparently disconnected series of points first I, I want to say that also the 14 channels the beginning of the 14 channels they did not have internal pathways okay, okay if you know the ma wang dui uh, cultivation uh, when they found the oldest uh, uh, channels uh, mention of channels, they found 11 channels, and the channels yeah. do not go Connected. into the, they, they don't go into the organs. Originally. There doesn't seem to be such a written tradition of master tongue acupuncture in the same way that there is for classical acupuncture. Is, is that because it's more of an oral tradition or rather than a, a written tradition? It was also written, but you, you need to understand that 
Master Dong's uh, lived in a, a time of war, a lot of wars, and the books were burnt. There were books in his in the tradition. Pedlin Carson he claims that it went it goes back to the Han Dynasty, the tradition. Okay. And so it's very wow. even in the traditional acupuncture. I think the internal pathways were added afterwards to explain. They As in like a reverse work. engineering, really. Because <laughs> I mean they're they're described very detailed in the Ling Shu, aren't they? The divergent pathway, yeah. PMNs, Luo channels, so on and so forth. But I, I'm sure you know like Jeffrey Yuan, like a classical he he thinks the channels are more a uh, uh, concept conceptual idea. But they yeah. were mapped to explain the efficacy of certain points mm. or techniques on certain yeah, areas to show that this area has influence in the tunnel or in this area so we, it's a map we're drawing the line so let's we're drawing something that has uh trying to explain something but he must have done the best to look at the channels like reflex areas padlin carson uh, that translated the the book i think soon we'll talk about it what's special about masodon each point has a like he has an influence on the channels on the organs okay but it doesn't say how it happens. It's this, it has it. We don't, it's like, it's like saying that the organs are, are, um, are presented on the skin. Yeah, okay. Like holo holographically or... Yeah, holographic in every, all areas on the body, but not in a straight mm. line. The, the kidney, we could find the kidney on the fingers, we could find the kidney on the forearm, we could find it on the, on the legs, okay, in all the areas. So it's yeah. not like they're all connected. They are connected through the chat for the organ. And the organ is like reflecting itself on the external mm -hmm. part of the body. And that's acupuncture. We look at the surface to see what's going on in the mm -hmm. in the internal parts of the body. But, you know, the Western mind, we like to have a very, very definite mechanism, don't we, to explain why why things work that is more than just holography. So maybe it's just about satisfying that, that kind of need for a logical explanation. You know, we, we, we want to understand how it works. We try to build up concepts and theories behind it. And, and uh, you know, sometimes the explanation... And the theories behind how it works are relatively simple, but it's not easy to practice, though. It takes time to master it. So that's the beauty about it. It's uh, the foundations, the principles behind the method and the points. This is relatively simple, of how, but how to master it and how to practice it in a high level uh, to get high clinical efficacy. And this is, in the end, what, what draw me into it in the end. Because as clinicians, we want to get good results. Other styles of acupuncture also maybe can get good results. But from my um, modest experience, it was sometimes shocking to see how fast and how uh, uh, how uh, quickly and strong the, the method that this style of acupuncture has with related to clinical efficacy. Yeah, okay. uh, and in clini as clinicians, we evolve. We want to learn and to be better practitioners. And, uh, you know, from our experience, from my experience, this is uh, the course for you. Yeah. So, Sean, your experience was the same. Uh, that it was about, it's all about clinical efficacy. So it, it just worked stronger, faster, yeah. better with, with longer lasting results. Yeah, that, that's why you, you that was so correct. What Gil is saying is that's what, that's what, keeps you in the system is the the results and i tell you what's amazing is the internal medicine results because uh, you know that's like i just now i'm treating a patient for a long time okay and she i try to persuade her maybe to stop and she comes twice a week twice a week for like for more than a year and she has a heart failure kidney failure she has a, I don't know how to say it in English, long, high blood pressure. Yeah, pulmonary hyper, hypertension. Pulmonary hyper, so like uh, so many issues. And she she comes twice a week and she's like, her all her blood tests are, are improved. Uh, she used to like absorb water. It's going down. And so, but I've been, and she came twice a week. But, and, you know, I tried mm -hmm. to stop her. I said, maybe we do a break. No, no, no. And. It's like opportunity because not every patient is committed. She's like a very old also to come twice a week, but she thinks that this is what's keeping her alive. Yeah. And but now after like a year and a half, I could look and see if things have changed. And what's amazing for me to see is that the, 
the condition is much better and she's like getting better, not worse. And these are based on kind of organic results of kidney function. And yeah, well, blood, function. blood tests, her carotenines went down and, you know, her blood uh, uh, is much better and she's feeling much better. She's like, she's, it's like she, she says that this is what is keeping her, that she could still go and do things and, you know, be active. Yeah, okay. Wow. Um, maybe uh, you can tell us a little bit about um, the course that you're going to run at, at ICOM. This is the second time you guys are, are coming over to England. You know, last year we did a foundation course. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about what the foundation course is going to look like this year, what you're going to be covering and, and what, what students can expect. Yeah, so um, it's the second time we are coming. The foundation course, as far as I know, um, one of the most definitely by, by hours, academic hours, is one of the most comprehensive uh, course uh, exists. And... Uh, um, We'll talk about the, the theory behind uh, the principles of the method. We will learn about the points, and but most importantly, it will be it will be hands on clinical practice. Very important to understand in Master Dong's acupuncture is the needling technique, how to needle the points, and a lot of practice will be made as well. We will do uh, also uh, previous uh, Zoom uh, uh, meetings, uh, and uh, after the course, we'll have uh, another. Uh, a Zoom uh, uh, class, and uh, as well, we are not disappearing. We will have uh, oh, certain types of uh, social media uh, groups for follow up, for discussions. Uh, because in the end, you know, as teachers as well, we we learn from our students. Mm -hmm. So we learn from you. We learn from the outcome that you get as as students, and. Uh, and this is part of our way of uh, learning. And we, we we look at it as a, a long-term uh, investment. As, as you see, second time we are returning and Sean, uh, we will teach together a part of the time and uh, and the other the other time we will split and Sean will teach more advanced uh, uh, courses because in the end, uh, it's like a, a starting point of getting an insight Site of a very interesting uh, lineage and style of acupuncture, family lineage, Dong's family lineage, uh, style of acupuncture, and we need to have a, a point to start with. And then uh, there are more things to learn and more things to um, uh, master in. And Sean maybe can talk a bit about uh, the advanced course as well. Yeah. So maybe, I mean, I mean, I'm testament. Obviously, I did the foundation course with you guys last year and the, the, the kind of post course support group on WhatsApp is a really fun and lively exchange of kind of clinical information and, and this kind of thing. Um, but Gil, what I wanted to ask you, maybe you can explain a little bit that, you know, as a classical acupuncturist, I, I'm, I'm used to needling singular points and then, you know, either dispersing or supplementing the the, the site of the acupuncture point. And I was really struck by how different the needling is in master in master tongue because you you often needle dharma sets and you don't tonify or disperse. Can you say a little bit more about the the difference in in the needling style? Yeah, so obviously in the foundation course we're gonna talk about the the method and the principle behind it. We're gonna learn the points and we're gonna practice a lot. And while learning the points, we basically learn different. Uh, needling techniques and one of uh, the most known and famous needling technique is the Dauma needling technique which is uh, basically a, a, a set of three points in a in a uh, in a line that we needle together 60 percent of master Dong's points are uh, are categorized according to Dauma Dauma sets and uh, the Dauma idea is very simple but very effective. Uh, we are uh, enhancing the chi mechanism in, in in a certain zone, as Sean said, a certain area, in order to affect other areas in the body. And while we do that, the effect, first of all, is is uh, stronger. While we don't need to focus too much about the needling technique, it's mainly an even technique. I mean, obviously, if you are very trained and uh, have a good... Uh, 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 
technique of obtaining the chi, the chi. Mm -hmm. You can do that, but uh, most of the times it's uh, a, it's an even technique. We we are needling three points in a in a in a segment in an area in order to rectify, in order to correct the chi flow. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, we are affecting a, a certain area and have the, and affecting this area has a broader resonance in the body. Mm -hmm. So Master Dong by, uh, by uh, uh, exposing his uh, theory and his family lineage of acupuncture share the points, many of them are in a Dharma set. So we are learning a, a needling technique while learning the points themselves at the same time. Yeah, so so my sense was that it's it's largely about amplitude. You know, you put three needles instead of one. There's a, even though the needling technique is actually, sensation-wise, I found it very gentle, actually, but there's a there's a kind of power of resonance that's, that seems to be the result of three needles in, in the same local, local area. Would you say that that's correct, that it's about... The quantity of needles. So it's not about quantity, although sometimes, uh, you know, in at the end, sometimes patients ask me, do you count the needles that you put? And I'm telling them, no, I don't count because I'm just thinking in my mind. Now I want to focus mainly on the lung and the heart. So in my mind, my diagnosis is how I'm going to focus lung and heart and then which areas I will choose on the body and then which points I will apply. And usually I'm applying the uh, down assets together mm -hmm. so i'm not counting how many needles i put and actually it's not a problem at all to put more needles in the end uh, the, the the opposite the results are even better but while you uh, uh, apply it through through experience you also learn how to minimize and how to focus more on, on certain areas for example, Dharma uh, idea has a, an idea of the upper and middle and lower jiao, kind of like a, an effect of the sun jiao, the three burners in the body to affect the body. But sometimes you want to focus more on the upper part of the body. So you maybe you choose only one or two points out of the out of the Dharma sets, which can be three or four or we will talk about it. We will explain it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. I understand. So sometimes you understand, also you understand it through palpation. You observe the, 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 the outer, the skin area, the outer of the body, and you see changes there. Maybe you see uh, blood vessels, or maybe you see something in the tissue, and you just go with that. It's a matter of palpation. That's the art of, of, of our medicine, the diagnosis. So maybe you need it there more. Yeah, okay. uh, and you don't do the entire dharma. But as beginners, we need to learn the points, and we need to learn all the dharma sets. Yeah. And that's what's yeah. unique about this: is that you learn the points, but you also learn needling technique and understanding how to apply it in the in the body. I, maybe I just want to just emphasize something. Giddy was like at the end started started to talk about it. Is this why we have this dharma technique? Because what Master Dan saw is. Like I said, the, the organs are being reflected on the on the surface of the body. But the reflection is maybe not as in a point, it's in an area. Okay, so and the the tissue changes when the organs are getting out of balance. There are changes on the surface of the body. So you like Gilly said, you could palpate and feel the changes, you could see the changes, but it's a, a big area. So it's like you're trying to change this area. And the change in this area will influence the internal organs. So sometimes one needle is not enough. You need to do a few needles in the area because the tissue is, is changing also to change the tissue to influence the organs. As in depending on, on how strong the observable change is in the, in the exterior, right. if there's a lot of congestion, then you're going to need to increase the amplitude of the, the, the intervention. Yeah, the mount. If yeah. it's like in a broad area, we do more needles. If it's just in a small area, we'll do smaller. So dauma is like an area yeah. that we could observe and try to understand where to needle. But this is like it's more advanced idea. At the beginning, students cannot understand this kind of thing. Okay? okay. Like it's like second year uh, uh, mm -hmm. technique. The yeah. first year, you need to learn the points. And they uh, like that, but you understand that there's uh, there's there's more to it. Yeah. And you asked about tonifying, tonifying, and uh, sedation, like in Masodong. 
In Macedon, there are areas that are more tonifying and areas that are more sedating. It's not a matter of needle technique. It's more, and also each point, there are points that are treating the Zhang Fu. And uh, each point has a, uh, it's called a Shenjin. We'll talk about it maybe later. Points that treat the bowels, that treat the Fu organs are more... Uh, and to excess. They treat more Drain. excellent. And, po and points that are more treating uh, the, the Zhang are more tonifying. But there's also points that, that are, are, they treat excess as the Phoenician because what they, they, they find they do. Yeah, okay. So it's like that. It's not through the technique. It's not through the needle technique. It's through where you need a little. Yeah. Okay. So, so I, and my, you know, one of the other questions that I that, that I wanted to ask is, you know, there's a lot of master tongue um, CPDs that are offered here, and they tend to be very symptomatically based. And you know, at ICOM, we we try to to encourage students to look at a root and a branch manifestation of a of a particular pathology or presentation. Um, how much does that show up in the way that you construct treatments? Are you always looking to to treat a root as well as the branch manifestation? And is that easy to do within this system? Uh, the truth is that the, the root is the most important. Yes. In Macedon acupuncture, the branch is yeah. less important. And uh, at the beginning, when you, when you encounter Macedon acupuncture, you see them as magical points. You just want to learn the points. But to get really good results, you need to under, learn to, uh, to diagnose the root. And that's the basis of the whole system. Masodong, when you read his cases, he's always talking about the root. Mm -hmm. And sometimes he only treats the root. He doesn't even treat the symptoms. Yeah. Okay, we come to the beginning of the lung, uh, lung, uh, lung, lung sciatica. <laughs> that's like, it's Masodong in his writing, he's like giving us clues about mm -hmm. this principle. Yeah. It's like saying, okay, what is lung chi, uh, lung deficiency, uh, sadika? It's sadika based on lung deficiency. As a, as a zang organ function of as descending and dispersing of chi. Right. So you need to see that guy, this patient has a, zang, uh, a lung chi deficiency. So he's sadika. The sadika will be the same. It will be on the lower leg. But mm. we will treat it with points that will... Uh, tonify the lung. There's also kidney chi sciatica, kidney sciatica. Uh, the sciatica could be on the same channel, on the bladder channel, but will be treated with different points mm -hmm. to treat the root. So the root in Macedonia acupuncture is it's extraordinarily effective, uh, important, and um, he used mostly the palm diagnosis to diagnose the root, face mm -hmm. diagnosis, okay. and pulse. He also took the pulse. Mm -hmm. Okay. Before. Have you guys got any favorite points? Anything that someone could take away and start using in the clinics? I think the best way is to start playing with any new style and see the results and how you can get amazing things so quickly in master tongue. So it's a difficult question because it, <laughs> you know, it's it, there are periods in the clinic where you treat more mm. of these cases. Or now, obviously, there is a set of twenty, twenty-five, thirty more even that are very, very common. To use commonly used. Um, recently, I'm exploring a lot and using a lot the uh, Sanzong, the three weights. Mm -hmm. It's a, a point. It's a dharma set on the lower leg. For dampness, um, as I understand it, no, or sort of um, the action of those points is for kind of toxicity in the body, or yeah. So it's the number is seventy-seven, oh five, six, and seven. Uh, San Zong, uh, Zong is a uh, weight, so these these points treat accumulations in the body, mm -hmm. so they can treat uh, tumors or uh, they can treat all kinds of masses in the body. But their Shen Jing is uh, mainly it's the spleen, uh, as, it's, as, it's, a, as a transformer of dampness and the regulator of mm -hmm. dampness, yeah. And the broad of uh, indication is. Is all over the place. You have uh, the indication is quite a lot, uh, but you need to understand how to use them well. Sometimes in gynecology, for example, uh, polycystic over polycystic ovary syndrome (PCOS), mm -hmm. and when to use them, with what kind of patients. Maybe these points also represent a uh, uh, blood stasis as well. So sometimes mm -hmm. you can use them for uh, thyroid problems because uh, they affect the area of the chest and the throat. 
but as a system, as a as a broad perspective of diagnosis and the root would treat the spleen. And we know that the spleen is a very important system in the body related to gynecology, related to postnatal chi, related to blood as well. You can use them also in fertility and in gynecology. So, and these points are excellent to treat lateral side uh, problems like facial paralysis, uh, migraines, very, very common uh, conditions in the clinic. So recently, I think I understood more better how to use the points and uh and i see them all the time in the clinic very very commonly used points that you need to know how to master them and use them in the clinic that's really cool i actually um i use that i was looking through a couple of books and it's suggested i found something that suggested to use the three weights uh for trapezius pain and i guess it comes back to what sean said it seems to be there's always a a Com combination of kind of nasatong and balanced methods seem to be so similar and i guess the three weights holographically relates to the kind of the tra trapezius muscle so i use that with a bit of cupping so i wonder if that's kind of the blood stasis working as well but this woman was just like she thought it was a miracle she'd mm -hmm. been to see a chiropractor osteos no one had been able to help her she couldn't really move her neck her shoulders anything and she basically danced out of the clinic it was quite like extraordinary so I, I wonder if that's the kind of the blood stasis as well as maybe a little bit of the balance method working its wonders. But yeah, after yesterday, I'm Sean, a huge fan of those points. <laughs> Sean, yeah. you want to address the question, balance yeah, method all, and Mastodon? All, yeah, I, first of all, the, I was also going to say the free weights. So it's just great that we are like <laughs> focused on this thing. And I think that for me, the free weights, I have a lot of, to say about the free weights. But uh, in what you're asking, yeah, the free weights are very, the trapezius will be like very good for the upper trapezius. You know, the trapezius mm. has three portions, so it's more for the side. Okay. The tree, that's, so. that's, I mean, that's where it's feeding it. Yeah, yeah, that's, we don't look at the Macedon through the balance method. One time, a long time ago, now we understand mm. that it's it's not based on the 14 channels. So, <laughs> okay, mm. so it's less, we look at, but you can do it. It's not saying that you could do that. But the free weights is really, such important points and and you know in Macedon we have main points to treat the zang fu and the spleen has a lot of groups points and the free weights are treating more the aspect of dampness related to the spleen so of course we want to use them a lot because we see so much these kind of issues and uh, a lot of times you could find findings in the area you you find really dampness you find nodules in the area of the weights it's like it's incredible i see it all the time and it's just an example. And also, it's interesting, each of the Macedon points has what we call a shenji. And it's traded, it's, uh, translated as shenji is nerve. But it's Macedon at the beginning, he called it channel. And afterwards, he wanted to like be accepted um, by the Western medicine, but be accepted more. So Western medicine was more accepted. So he used terms from Western medicine. But a shenji is, no, is the channel. And the weights have a splint channel, but they also have a, a lung and a heart subbranch. So it means they are when when Masodong sees says lung and sees heart, lung related to chi stagnation, and heart is related to blood stagnation. Mm -hmm. So these points are treating spleen, but also chi and blood stagnation. So we know that this is the, uh, they're all going together. We have chi stagnation that could uh, cause a. Uh, um, uh, the infl uh, uh, um, fluid to accumulate and there will be dampness. Mm -hmm. Or you could ha have heart, uh, in Macedon, we use the heart when there's blood stasis. So there could also be blood stasis and all this mechanism is causing uh, masses to, to come. Mm -hmm. So they have very powerful points because they'll treat the phlegm, they'll treat the chi stagnation and the blood stagnation. Mm -hmm. So that's why I agree with Gilly. That's for me. They like the I like them the most. These points. They are really very special points, and they points that treat excess. Okay, mm -hmm. we have other points of the spleen that will more treat spleen deficiency. My understanding of it is is that you know you have all these points in the different zones of the body with a list of indications that they that they that they treat, and then you have the nerve roots and the sub nerve roots. So those presumably speak more to the root the the indications more to the manifestation so is, is this how you kind of construct a root and a branch treatment 
No, because sometimes the the indication is relating is, is has a relationship to the the shenji the nerve. Sometimes and sometimes this is symptomatic because of other reasons. Okay, so it's it's not really like very uh, accurate. It's like it's it's mixed together. But the root is the most important. Not only the root, the names of the points also give us information of the mechanic mechanism of the point. Mm -hmm. uh, at the beginning, when I first met Masodong acupuncture, the I saw the points. I got very angry, mm -hmm. and I I said, "What is crazy? I don't like it. Uh, a lot of points on the hands, and uh, all these Western indication. Where is the function? Like mm -hmm. in Denver? Where's the energetic mm -hmm. kind of quality yeah, of the point? Like, Maybe mad. I was angry, <laughs> <laughs> so, but you know, so, sometimes anger is like a, a motivation to try and understand something. Mm -hmm. So I think it was also my motivation at the beginning. It looked to me crazy and I said, "What is Western? It's Western medicine. It's not Chinese medicine," because there was not the basis. I didn't they talk. They didn't show me the principles. Yeah. Okay, that's like the quest we went on to try and discover the principles. So each and it's very much traditional, a... huh, Sean? Yeah, yeah. It's just the language that may be confusing people. It's very rooted in in classical acupuncture. Because the underlying principles are, are the same, whether it's classical acupuncture or, or master dom. But I think what Gilly's hey, trying so... to say that also in classical acupuncture, they give you the function, what Deadman did the function, this is later on. There's, in the classics, they don't have any function to the points. It's just indications. Yes. Mm. Afterwards, they, they started, mostly in the Song dynasty, they started to do this uh, indication. But mm. through the indication, you have a principle that you need to understand. Also, if you take a classical combination of points, it doesn't mean you must do the combination as the points are saying, as 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 the point. You don't mean you do the point. You need to understand the principle that's behind the the points. What are what's the mechanic? What are they trying to do? You could do the same thing with different points. It's mm -hmm. not the points itself that it's important. It's the, I mean, that more about the kind of the action of the zones that you use the hand for draining excess yang and the and other areas for for nourishing and supplementing and, and so on and so forth. Yeah, that's also and also the points that are used in Master Dong is different, but in classical, yeah, what channels the points are and what like you, normally a point combination of Rema in the classic, they are not from one one channel, they're from a few channel and each channel is representing a function. So you look mm -hmm. at what what they're trying to do, and then you understand this is a principle of treatment. The 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 um, point combinations are trying to show you a principle of treatment, and not this. That's the points you must use. And it's interesting. That's how I also started to understand Masodong acupuncture. There are great books of uh, James Mayer mm -hmm. in English that he 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 like he gives disease and um, combinations. So at the beginning, when I was not really familiar with the principles, you start using the them in this way. And slowly, slowly, after using it a lot of times, you start seeing the principle behind the combinations. It takes mm. time to see it. To study Masodong acupuncture, it's a process. So you mm. Slowly, slowly, you get to understand it in a more uh, deeper way. Mm. At the beginning, you use it very simply. And you get results. It's not saying you get results, but... What's great is that you could develop into the system and really get, I think, better results. I, I think my results are better than what mm -hmm. I, when I, more in internal medicine. Okay. Pain is very, more easier to treat most of the time. There are also some difficult mm -hmm. cases, not like every pain case you could treat, but it's more easier. It's the internal medicine that's a challenge in acupuncture. Mm -hmm. And this is why we teach uh, the the method and the foundations, and we emphasize uh, learning all of that while learning the points. And we don't do a short seminar about how to treat migraines with mastodon's acupuncture, because in the end, when you learn the method behind, you understand the principle, and it takes time, obviously, to understand it. But so then you learn the points, then you learn the the principle behind it, and then you can start apply it to basically treating everything. Yeah. And this is why we teach it like that and not teach it in a in a short, very uh, specific uh, condition based or clinical oriented based. condition. Yeah. Because so how easy th you, this is the how, way to learn it in the end. Yeah. How well, easy from, my, from our perspective. Anyway. 
How easy do you think it is for, for people who've never experienced it, who are practicing in a certain modality, TCM or channel-based acupuncture, to integrate what, what you're going to teach in the foundation course into their practice? Can they start practicing immediately and still integrate it with a kind of more 14-channel-based 14, 14 style? You know, I, I've been treating, uh, teaching master dog acupuncture to practitioners that for years already, and I think it's there's not one answer to that. Uh, some 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 are like come from Japanese acupuncture, mm -hmm. so they they like use the points, and some are like from balance method. Balance method, if you look at it as a as a fortune channel, it, it's no problem. It integrates it uh, slowly. And uh, some people just, they add the points to their system and that's what they do. They don't continue developing into, into Masadong acupuncture. They learn this, uh, more points to use and they use it that way. So I think it's everybody will take from, takes from the course what, what suits them. Yeah? yeah, we hope that people will uh, uh, go into learn, start like uh, getting more deeper and deeper in Masadong acupuncture, but there's a transition stage. Sure. Even we went through that transition stage. You don't like leave what you're doing straight away and start doing something new. Mm -hmm. uh, you start mm -hmm. like combining it slowly, slowly. And then maybe one day you say, you find yourself saying, I'm using more master dong acupuncture than what I used before. I said, the yeah. And then you drop the old thing. That's what happened to me. Now I only do master dong acupuncture. But you mm -hmm. can also keep on combining the two systems you're using. There's not, there's not one right way to practice. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. every practitioner is different and special and he like he combines what he learned and just can you remind us when the when the course starts yeah so it's uh over i think it's six seven days start in april through to the second of may is the kind of the online initial components then there's three days so, in may 11th uh, 10th 11th 12th where it's really getting that practical experience and going through a lot of the content and then I think there's one final follow-up session on the 27th of June, which is a kind of a two-hour Q&A sort of session. But then, as we've kind of alluded to, there's also the ongoing support through the WhatsApp group and all of that sort of thing, where you're constantly getting feedback, support in terms of cases and anything else. Yeah. So in the end of April, beginning of May, there are three online, two, three-hour yeah. Zoom sessions to yeah. introduce the, the foundational principles, and then a three-day on-site practicum where you dive in you learn the points you learn the needle technique and and some some combinations as well and then a follow-up a little while later plus the, yeah. the post course support group and then the advanced guild we're doing two days two full days of clinical practice effectively yeah in advanced class we'll be studying a palm diagnosis and we'll go more into the the way to like look at the points and try to see where's the best place to needle. Start like trying to read the body. Like so next next mm -hmm. stage. It's that next the, level of discernment and distillation mm -hmm. of uh, yeah. sets. Yeah. After you know the points, then now now you maybe it's trying to see where to needle in the Dalma. Yeah, right. where where's the right place to needle. Mm -hmm. So it's by more by like uh, palpation, observing, and also I use the bus. I use the VAS to to understand. You know, the VAS is um, is uh, it comes from auricular medicine. It's like trying to to diagnose to um, see where the active points are using the pulse and stimulating the points. So, As in, there's an automatic nervous system response to points that are active and are open to to being needled. Or yeah, that's very accurate, and uh, that's that's it's very very. A useful technique because mm -hmm. to find where to needle. Yes. So I'll be also teaching that technique. Um, any other questions, Josh, Gil, Sean, anything else that you would um, like to share? We look forward to see you guys in Brighton uh, in uh, in May. Yes. And uh, yeah, it will be uh, lovely, as you say, huh? Yeah, I mean, I hope we get good weather like we did last year, and you know, we've got the garden to hang out in, and yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna yeah, be really for exciting. sure. Yeah. For us, it's, for sure. it's very special to treat in icon. It's like for us, you know, it's like icon. <laughs> <laughs> well, for, for us as well, for us as well to have mm. you guys teaching the the depth. I mean, that's mm. you know, that's what I want icon to specialize in is this sort of deep study of different styles mm. of acupuncture, but from a um, yeah, from a more profound from a more profound level or as deep as we can get.
so yeah it's our privilege as well to host you guys here mm -hmm. looking forward to it